In this video I'm going to take a drawing that I previously created and generate g-code for it. I'm also going to be manipulating the drawing uh, so that you can see how I would go about doing it. Now with the regard to the drawing itself uh, it's a very simple drawing and we're going to bring it up on the screen and this is just a uh, series of parts. Now you notice there's different colors. We have green, we have blue, we have a tan, and then we also have a violet or a purple. Um, and then we have a red box. Now the red box, I use a red box to uh, immediately identify a series of parts. And in this case, this would be the master set of parts. So I would back out of my drawing. I would take and copy this and then I would paste it on here again. Now I have a duplicate of this uh, set of drawings. Now what I would do is I would change this color outline and I'm going to change it to a blue. Now I know that this red I don't want to change anything in the red and the reason that I do not want to change anything in the red is because I want a master drawing. And then I have the second drawing which is exactly the same right now um, but if I make changes I make changes to this drawing first and once I have approved those changes and they are fine then I go back and I would change my master drawing so the red line never gets changed until we are sure that there's uh, the changes are are okay to be made so I'm gonna zoom in here and the reason that I use the colors, now obviously the outline, uh, that just dictates what drawing it is. And then I have a series of parts here. You notice I have green, and then I have blue, and then there's purple or violet, and then I also have a tan. Now this tan color, in my drawings, usually tan represents wood. So these parts would be cut out of wood. And in this case, these parts here are going to be cut out of eighth inch wood and these parts here are going to be these parts here are going to be cut out of quarter inch wood so just a couple of things that I have to remember within my drawing but but and then the other thing is the blue anything in blue is going to be cut at one time anything in green is going to be cut at another time and then anything in violet is going to be cut at a separate time now I know within this drawing that the violet is also a quarter inch tool cut uh, because basically what this is is a groove that's going to be cut into this material it won't go all the way through all of the blue lines will go all the way through and they will be uh, uh, foam material same thing with the green now however with the green these circles they will not go all the way through um, but the other parts will so there's lots of th lots of things going on here within my drawing and probably some things uh, you'll you'll wind up uh, with your drawing too so that's why I wanted to go ahead and and use this drawing because it has a lot of different uh, things going on so we're going to start by taking a uh, this part here these are the wood parts so I'm going to copy them and now I'm going to move over and I'm going to place them out here where I can work with them. So now we have them out here. And again, these are quarter inch material. So I have to remember that this is going to be a quarter inch thick. So whereas these other wood parts, which would be these here, all of these would simply be an eighth inch thick. So again, there's some things you just have to remember. All right, so with that said, we're going to work with these parts here alone. So what I need to do first is, since I have my drawing, and now I want to generate the G-code, so I need to operate the cam palette. And the cam palette just simply allows me to take a DXF file and turn it into G-code. So the way you do that is first you have to set up the cam palette. So we go over here to cam and if I refresh it, see there's nothing in here. There's not even a tool selected. So the first thing I have to do is select the tools. Now to explain what I'm going to be doing here with this tool. First I need to drill some holes. These holes here are nothing more than to hold the part in place. So 
in order to hold the part in place I'll drill these holes and then this hole and this hole here are vent holes and then the, of course you have the outside diameter of the part so the first thing I want to do is set my cam package up or the cam pallet up and the way you do that is go and select a tool so we select a tool so I'm going to add the tool and for drilling you have to use a drill bit so I'm going to be using a spot drill and the spot drill is going to be an eighth of an inch and say OK and then my second tool is going to be a, a, a mill an end mill it's going to be a flat end mill and it too is going to be an eighth of an inch and then we'll say OK and we say OK and now I have my tools in here you can see I have the drill bit and then I have the router tool uh, now I'm going to refresh my tool palette so that it knows it's there now the last thing that I need to do is make sure that the machine is uh, or the uh, table on my machine is shown in my drawing this way I can place the parts where I want to cut them on the table so uh, a shortcut for that is just simply go up here to cam part setup and I can make three changes change this number this is 48 because that's the length of my table and this is uh, 24 that's the height of my table and then I'm going to be cutting in um, a quarter of an inch so we're going to say that the, the height is uh, 0 0.250 so now I have a blue line that just showed up or a gray line over here and this represents my table so to make things simple I'm going to drag all of this over closer to my table so basically what I have now is my machine is shown right here so I know if I want to cut the parts on the left side of my machine then I could put them over here if I want to cut them on the left upper corner they would go here so basically this is the the size of my table or my work surface that I have I can deal with so I like to cut parts in the middle of my table and it doesn't really matter whether it's on either end but I can get to my table pretty easily on this end so for the most part I like to use this end of the table however you want to change this up sometimes because what you'll wind up doing is you'll wind up wearing this end of the table and not getting much wear down here so uh, it's good to move things around uh, at different times depending on what you're cutting so with that said let's go on whenever I cut these parts I'm going to want to drill two holes and then move the machine out of the way so that I can put in two screws now I could go ahead and drill all four screws but that means I've got to secure the part until those holes are drilled and then I've got to secure the part while I insert at least the, the second screw the first screw would keep the we give it a pivot point the second screw would lock it in place so to make this simple what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two holes and then I'm going to drill the second two holes but I'm going to break up the code and put a, a a line of code in there it's going to have the machine come over to about this area here and stop and then once I hit the run button again then it'll go over and finish drilling the two holes and then come back and stop and then I can put the other two screws in and then I will be able to cut the parts and they will be held in place so again first step is drill the holes so we're going to go over here and notice that nothing's lit up right now and it's not lit up because I need to refresh the cam palette because once I entered in the cam part setup the cam palette doesn't know that until I refresh it so now I refresh it and now I have the options for uh, to be able to select what I want to do in this case I want to drill so now I have a, um, a drill feature selected so I'm going to be checking some perimeters now the height the clear Z plane is going to be 0 .5 zero, zero, which is a half inch and then we will the top of the material will be zero and then the depth is going to be negative 0 0.250 would be a quarter of an inch but I'm going to make sure that I go through so I'm going to say 0 0.265 which is going to be uh, take me a little bit below the uh, quarter inch depth and then we're going to go over here and our feed rate this could feed rate for this drilling operation it can be pretty high so I'm going to just say 90 inches a minute and then we will hit enter 
and now I can go over and we're going to drill this hole first so I'm just going to move the cursor over the center of the hole and hit the V key and then go up and hit the V key again now I'm going to hit the checkered flag because this is I want to finish at this point so now I just have these two holes drilled 